Hi, I'm Andy Vickers and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to use something called anti-cogging to turn a stuttery slow motor like this into something like this. So this video is actually quite special to me. This is my first real YouTube video and we're actually going to be jumping right in at the deep end with a niche robotics video to get us started. So there's nothing like a baptism by fire to kick things off. My aim here is not to find my fame and fortune on YouTube, it's actually to try and save you some head scratching time. It took me longer than I would care to admit to try and implement anti-cogging on my robot, and that's because when I was hammering search terms into Google, not a lot of stuff came back. So I figured why not just share the benefit of what I learned and try and save you all some time. So what is cogging? Well, if you've ever tried to drive a brushless motor slowly, you probably found that it was quite stuttery and jerky in the motion, and we call this cogging. If you pick up a brushless motor and you turn it, you're gonna feel that those magnets want to pull those coils into set positions. And this is what causes cogging, because it's no different when you apply voltage and try and drive the motor, the motor's going to want to turn where it wants to turn to get to those points of rest around the rotation. There's quite a bit of science behind this, and I am not smart enough to explain that to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a Hackaday article below the video, and if you want to read more, you can do so there. So what a lot of people do when they're afflicted by cogging is they'll tend to go one of two routes. Either one, they'll go and buy a servo motor, which is a lot more expensive, or two, they'll continue to use the motor they have and they'll implement a gearbox. And gearing actually makes a good solution. Let's say though that you have a reduction on your gearbox of five to one, your motor is actually going to turn five times faster for every revolution of the output shaft. So that means you're much less likely to see any cogging effect because the motor is turning five times faster than it would have before. But it just does come with some drawbacks. So uh, one, you will have a five times lower top speed because of that reduction. Number two, you're going to have a much greater complexity in your design because you're introducing extra components, there's going to be extra expenditure to go by the gearbox, and last of all you're going to have backlash because as gears mesh and uh, things kind of jive together then you're going to get uh, some slop in the mechanism and this can cause a little bit less accuracy if you're trying to build a very accurate system. So anti-cogging is a cool concept because it allows us to use those cheap brushless motors that we want to use, but allows us to drive them smoothly and slowly at the same time without a gearbox. So the way it works is it first of all calibrates and that basically is it drawing a map. It rotates the motor through 360 degrees and throughout that rotation it measures the magnetic strength of the motor at each point. And it actually stores that, so when it drives the motor in the future, it can give it just the right amount of torque at every point to keep it moving smoothly. So it uses that map to sort of cancel out the cog effect. So I've got a nice simple setup for us today. I have a Meanwell 24 volt power supply that's powering everything. I've got the Pi 400 to tap all the commands into. I've got the O-Drive, the encoder, and finally I've got the D5065 motor, which is just one of the two brushless motors that you can buy from O-Drive Robotics. So nice and straightforward setup today. Okay, we're over on the Pi now. So the first thing I'm going to do is open a terminal window. So if that's not on your top bar, you can just go to accessories and then terminal. I'm assuming at this point you've installed the O-Drive tool, so I'm just gonna do a sudo su. And then I'm going to load the O-Drive tool by typing O-Drive tool shell. So you can see now that it's loaded the O-Drive tool and actually my O-Drive is connected really quickly. So there it is. It's connected right now. So just so you know, I'm not going to pull the wall over your eyes. The first thing I'm going to do here is completely erase the configuration. So we're doing a factory reset now on the O-Drive. So I'll have no settings in there whatsoever. And actually you can see that bunch of junk that just showed up that actually meant that the O drive itself wiped and then reloaded and you can see there that it's reconnected at the bottom of the screen. 
I have to put some parameters in there quickly for my motor, so I'm going to set the current limit, the velocity limit, the calibration current, the braking resistance, and the pole pairs specifically for my motor. Next up, a little bit of fine tuning, so I have to set the torque constant for my motor and also set the motor type to high current. You'll actually find some information on this on the O-Drive Robotics documentation, it shows you how to fine tune your motor. Lastly, I'm going to tell the O-Drive that the encoder has 8192 counts per revolution on the encoder and it also uses an index. Right, let's save the configuration and just for good measure I'm going to hit the reboot. So there's three more fine-tune values that we need to complete here. So one is the position gain, another one is the velocity gain, and the final one is the velocity integrator gain. Your values might differ slightly, but I'm putting these values in here. These are my stock values, but we'll actually have to change these a little bit when we want to calibrate the anti-cogging. Now we're going to do a full calibration sequence. So it's going to turn the motor all the way one way and then all the way back. And it's going to record the encoder positions and the encoder index and store all the motor variables inside of the configuration tables inside the O-Drive. Next we're going to put the O-Drive in closed loop control and that means it's going to be able to control the motor and use the encoder to keep an eye on it. Now we're at the point where we can turn the motor, so let's just make sure it looks like a horrible jerky mess. So I'm just going to put the O-Drive in velocity control mode, if I can spell it right, and then I'm going to make the motor turn. So let's start with 0.5. And, oh, that does look a little bad, but we can probably make it worse. So let's do 0.2. Yep, that's pretty awful. Okay, let's turn it off. Next, we want to do three things. First, we want to tell the O-Drive that we have pre-calibrated our encoder and that that encoder has an index. And then we want to tell it that we've pre-calibrated the motor because we don't want to have to do a full calibration sequence every time we turn the O-Drive on. Now we're going to put the O-Drive in position control mode and if, like me, you just had your O-Drive in velocity control mode and you'd sent it some numbers, you might find that when you execute this command that it spins the motor wildly in one direction or the other while it finds that position on the encoder. We also need to set the input mode to pass through. And just for good measure we're going to put the axis in closed loop control. Now we're nearly ready to run the anti-cogging calibration sequence, but first I want to give you a tip. I actually found this tip on the O-Drive forums and it was someone called Wet Melon that posted this, but you need to increase your position gain and your velocity integrate gain, otherwise the anti-cogging seems to take weeks. If you increase this number it will take about a minute, so alter these numbers to make them higher. I've picked some values that work for me, so pick some values that work for your setup. Alright, the moment we've all been waiting for, it's time to start the anti-cogging calibration sequence and we do that by typing no drive zero, axis zero, controller, start anti-cogging calibration. Once you do this, the motor is going to start turning really slowly in a full circle and it'll be measuring the magnetic strength at each point, so be patient. As I said, this can take some time. I've actually sped up the graphic above just to show you what's going on. You can actually check the progress though. There's a variable. You can see me typing it in here. So that's config.anticogging.caleb underscore anticogging. And while that variable shows true, the process is still going on. So wait patiently until that variable outputs as false and then you'll know you're complete. Now we're going to tell the O-Drive that we've pre-calibrated the anti-cogging sequence and that means every time we turn the O-Drive on we won't need to calibrate the anti-cogging. Now don't forget to put your position gain and velocity integrator gain back to what they were before you increased them for the anti-cogging sequence. Now all that remains is to save your configuration and give the O-Drive a reboot. So as I said previously, now every time you turn on your O-Drive, your robot, you don't need to do a full calibration sequence. The O-Drive already has all that data stored, so all you need to do is tell the O-Drive to first of all search for the encoder's index position, so it knows where that 12 o'clock position is on the encoder. Put your O-Drive in closed loop control, 
and then you can start moving your robot. We're going to put the O-Drive in velocity control mode and let's feed it some numbers and see how it performs. So let's go straight for the torture test. Previously our motor would stall when it was running at 0 0.2 revolution so now we're going to just hit that same command and see how things look. So I would say that that looks pretty smooth. I think we've done it. Previously we wouldn't have been able to get this performance without having a gearbox and as we mentioned earlier that has a lot of downsides so I'm really happy with the performance here. So I'm going to make this really easy, I'm going to post all the source code from today's session on my website at andyvickers.net so you can go grab it there, I'll put a link to that below the video. So I hope you enjoyed this video, with any luck you got what you came here for. I'd like to make more of these videos in the future so you can help me do that by subscribing or liking the video, leave me some comments or some feedback down below. But thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.